Dear kids and grandkids, One day you will probably watch this, maybe when you're preparing for a school assignment about the year 2020. Maybe you'll wonder how things were back in the day. Maybe all this will seem quite distant to you because it sounds like fiction and so far away from anything you've ever lived, or at least I hope that's how it sounds. But if you feel like this could never happen to you, stop immediately. A month ago, that was exactly how I felt too. And I don't know how things have changed by the time you're alive, but the reality is that this can happen again. Soto and I had to go back to Greece. It all happened so quickly. We bought the tickets and left the next day before the flight started getting suspended. When we arrived, we went into a severe quarantine for 40 days. Change is never easy. And although I'm always surprised by our capacity to adapt, it doesn't make it any easier. There's this nurturing, almost mothering feeling of comfort that comes with banality and we instantly want to gravitate towards it. And when the whole world is thrown out of its comfort zone in less than a fortnight, well, it's unsettling. Italy is under a lockdown across the country as it battles the spread of the novel coronavirus known as Donald Trump. Trump Wednesday, Italy has been hardest hit by the outbreak. This is indeed for the, next the most challenging crisis we have faced midnight. since uh, the Second World War. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. The world has slowed down for a while. You can hear it. You can hear it when you go out for your weekly grocery shopping. You can hear it at home when there seems to be no background noise of the city. You can hear it when the birds that normally hide away from the town centre sing in the morning by your window. In the beginning, I was shell-shocked for a few days. I think my biggest mistake was to listen to the news all day long. The numbers climbing, the death toll rising, the people panicking. Like everyone else, I was stuck at home with nothing to do. I wasn't even at home. I was in my parents' Airbnb with only part of my pastimes that could have made this quarantine period easier. I also got sick. And combined with my deteriorating mood, I started showing telling symptoms. My appetite was the first to go. And then it was followed by fever and cough. But despite everything, I was lucky. I was lucky that I had mild symptoms. Lucky my parents had an Airbnb that Soto and I could quarantine in without risking the lives of our families. Lucky we decided to leave the UK early before the situation got worse. I'm currently on unpaid leave and I'm lucky that I haven't been fired. I have to pay rent and I'm lucky that my landlord has taken the rent down for the next two months. I know I'm lucky and I'm grateful for all this. What I'm struggling with is fear and change. I fear for my family in France and Greece. I fear for my friends and their loved ones. And because I'm afraid, I choose to act responsibly. I don't go out for a walk every day like others might do just because we are technically allowed. That, of course, is something I can do because I don't have to go to work every day. I stay in. If I touch something in the supermarket, I have to buy it. I don't let it there for someone else to touch. I combine my weekly hour walk with my weekly grocery shopping and I make sure to wear a homemade mask and sanitize my hands every time I have to touch something, before and after. Those are just small things compared to what all the people are doing. I have seen so much solidarity coming out of people and this has made me happy and hopeful. And what about change? How will things go back to normal after all that has happened? We all want to know what's going to happen next and when again will we be able to see our loved ones, travel home or even plan our lives ahead again. It feels like every step we take is fragile. Every day may bring something new. It's hard to pay bills without a job. 
Hard to keep a routine when there's nothing to look forward to or no obligation other than maybe some dishes in the sink to clean or a laundry to do. Hard to appreciate the small things and the time we are given when we don't know how long this time will last. What I'm about to say doesn't take anything away from the tragedy that is happening right now and how severe it is. But as someone with a lot of anxiety, I've had to find ways to cope. Maybe change is not such a horrible thing. Maybe we will be more prepared and the medical care system will only get better. Maybe this whole pandemic will make us slow down and appreciate the small things in life. All the small things. Maybe. Maybe. The important thing to do right now is to remember that this too will pass. In the words of J.R. Tolkien, it's like in the great stories, Mr. Frodo, the ones that really mattered, full of darkness and danger the way. And sometimes you didn't want to know the end because how could the end be happy? How could the world go back to the way it was when so much bad has happened? But in the end, it's only a passing thing. This shadow, even darkness must pass. A new day will come, and when the sun shines, it will shine out the clearer. Be patient and stay home.